name is Jason, and I'm a recovering alcoholic and addict. Hey, Jason. Thanks for sitting down with us today. My pleasure. It. Yeah. Um, how old are you? I'm 44. Right on. And um, uh, what was your drug of choice? My drug of choice uh, is methamphetamine. And how did you get introduced to that? Uh, through a co-worker. Um, I was... Uh, struggling with uh, as a crack cocaine addict and uh, never thought I could ever stop using crack cocaine and uh, I came to the point where I was uh, not allowed to use it anymore I was being tested so I turned to meth as a way to uh, just to you know use something different um, and uh, yeah avoid I, those drug tests avoid Take those drug yeah. yes sir yeah yeah man I know that feeling um, and so when did that start? I started uh, eight years ago. Right on. And were you, uh, before the crack, uh, what was your first drug? What, what, what started it all? Alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I drank, I, I got, uh, you know, intoxicated to the point where I uh, couldn't stand up or... Uh, uh, you know, speak. I was uh, in charge of babysitting my little brother at Christmas when my parents went out visiting. My dad had some liquor uh, up on the counter and I thought, oh, I'll try a little drinking. Next thing you know, I, I was, you know, I was intoxicated and, uh, and a very sick Christmas morning. It was probably one of the worst Christmases. Um, but, you know, uh, not to just to taste it, but to get so intoxicated, I couldn't stand up should have been a sign, you know, um, and there was lots of signs along the way that I chose to ignore, um, you know, until I, you know, got to the point recently where I needed a change, so. Yeah, kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. Yeah, man, I hear you. Um, can you talk a little bit about what life was like in active addiction? It, it was, it was misery, it was lonely, I find that uh, you know addiction and alcoholism puts space between um, the things you love and yourself, and uh, you know it, it gets you to where it's just you and the drug or you and the drink, you know, and uh, that's that's a place where I've been, and it's a lonely place. Um, you know, it just it uh, it it works for a while, you know, and then. And then it, it turns its ugly head and uh, at that point when it's not working anymore is when I became reliant on it, you know, and, and needed it. And it went from, from being something that helped to something that hindered very quickly. So, uh, you know, I have a very addictive personality. Um, you know, I can see how it's a progressive disease. You know, it went from, you know, uh, alcohol into drugs and, uh, and then into harder drugs. So. Uh, you know, I'm, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's not a fun spot to be in for me. Um, 29 years of my life, you know, have, has been put towards, um, you know, being a, trying to be a successful addict and alcoholic, which I failed miserably at. And, uh, you know, so, uh, but I believe it's never too late. So here I am grateful to be alive. Yeah. When you said it was working, what was working? What, were, what, what was there something you were kind of trying to mask, or was there something going on there? Yeah, was there was a lot of stuff going on at home. Um, you know, uh, there was a number of different uh, abuses that were going on. So it was like alcohol helped me uh, deal with my my physical limitations, with not being uh, of a big stature. It helped me feel, you know, strong. It gave me the courage, or the liquor courage, as they say, to to socialize with my peers and it helped me just to forget about what was going on at home. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it served a purpose for me early on. Um, I just, you know, I didn't see that I was drinking twice as much as, as uh, my friends who were twice the size of me were and, uh, you know, they would be passed out at a party after just, uh, you know, a fair amount of alcohol and, you know, I was drinking twice as much and still going, you know, after, after, you know, they were long passed out. So, uh, and only being half their size, you know, it was, uh, 
it was signs all over the place that I just, you know, I chose to ignore um, because, at, you know, at certain points it was working for me temporarily. So, For me, there was kind of a moment where I woke up one morning and I just, I knew for a long time I needed help. I wasn't ready, but there was a moment that happened and some, you know, a situation and it kind of just flipped a switch for me and right then and there I made it, I knew I had to make that phone call. Did you have a moment like that or was it a progression of things that happened or can you pinpoint a moment where you knew that's it, I need to get help? Um, it was a number of things. It was, it was a little bit of, of the progression. You know, it, it, my addiction took me where I never thought it, I would go, yeah. you know, and I always said, I'll never do that. And, you know, <laughs> here, here I am doing it. And, uh, yeah. you know, um, getting, uh, getting involved with the wall you know, that was uh, definitely a, an eye opener for me. Uh, you know, I had been uh, out of the system for quite a while and, you know, it, it, uh, it didn't take long in my addiction to get back into the system. Yeah. Um, but uh, the big thing was I was, the last time I was using, um, I had this feeling of um, my higher power was telling me that I needed to stop because he was becoming impatient with the misery that I was creating for myself. It was almost as if I was getting uh, that feeling when you're doing something wrong and you know you're doing something wrong. Well, it was this, this just overwhelming feeling of my higher power saying, I can't watch you do this much longer, you know? And, uh, and I have children uh, that I need to be a father for. So I thought, you know, I, I can't stop. I need to get help. And that's when I gave uh, you a call, Jason. So that was, that was, I think I was still high when I called you, um, but I knew that, uh, that it was time, you know, uh, otherwise I, I was going to end up, you know, succumbing to the disease. Yeah. So. Yeah, pretty brave choice of you, for you, you know. I know that phone always felt so heavy, you know, and it, I would make a phone call and they'd be, oh, put me on a wait list or, or you got to wait and they'll call you back or something like that. And then a couple of days later, I'd be high again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't hold on to it, you know? And that's the great thing. I mean, I went for help in Penticton, uh, where the area where I'm close by and, uh, you know, they're just so overwhelmed with, uh, you know, the opioid epidemic that's going on. Uh, treatment wasn't, a, you know, a realistic goal in the near future and I needed help right away. So, uh, you know, I thought about, uh, you know, a, a period in time when I had sobriety where I had uh, been introduced to a, g a gentleman by the name of uh, Jim Gray and uh, Jim helped me get that sobriety and uh, and he told me a promise he said you know if you need help you call me and uh, and so that popped in my head after hearing that it would take 14 months to get me into treatment um, so I gave uh, yourself a call and uh, the answer I got was get in there today and because of court obligations, I wasn't able to. Uh, but you know, the first opportunity that I could, I came, and uh, and I'm very grateful for that because I needed help right away, and uh, and that was just huge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we talked a little bit about what life was like, you know, during active addiction, and. Can you talk a little bit about for the people out there that maybe are struggling and are, are fearful about coming to recovery? You know, I know for me, I was scared. I was scared shitless. And that's what kind of kept me away for so long, I think, you know, not knowing what things were going to be like. Can you maybe offer some insight to what things were like while you were here? Uh, just, you know, it, it was it was fearful. Any time that, you know, uh, change is 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 present for me you know I, I get nervous and I get fearful um, you know but through the camaraderie of the the participants that were here with me at the time uh, it's great because everybody was at a different point in the treatment so you know I was uh, made felt I was made to feel welcomed by not only the staff but by the participants who helped kind of take me under their wing and help me just get through, um, you know, that, that, that thought of, am I doing this? Am I going to be able to do this? And, you know, we, uh, we just went through it together as a, as a team.
the participants and the staff. And, uh, you know, there is fear there uh, for sure. But, you know, um, for me, it was just my desire to want to stop using and to stop hurting myself and the people who I loved was just surpass the fear. And, you know, the solution is, is out there if you want it. It's, it's through the, uh, the 12 steps that, you know, that this program is, is the curriculum is based off of. And it's a, it's a simple program um, if you want it, you know, and if you're willing to put into it, uh, you know, all you can, well, the rewards are, are great. And uh, I, I keep thinking about what Jim says or has said to me, don't leave before the miracle happens. So, you know, that's, yeah. that's kind of, it's a miracle every day. You know, I'm growing uh, each day, uh, you know, not in my time. I, I kind of wish, uh, you know, I could just switch, yeah. uh, <laughs> got that addict yeah. mentality that I just, you know, want things to happen when I want it, how I want it, and uh, the way I want it. But, you know, I'm learning uh, to grow in the program, you know, at, uh, at my higher powers rate. And, uh, and, you know, today I have hope. And, uh, and the fear is still there. I think the fear will always be there, but it's a healthy fear. And it's not, uh, it's not a fear of, of, uh, of negative things. It's, it's a positive fear that helps me stay humble in, in what I'm doing and, and to be grateful for what I have today. Yeah, that's such a big part of it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you were talking about kind of lights going on or moments each day that you've had was there any in particular that maybe you could highlight that you said you know for me there was you know moments where kind of the light went on or or the aha moment if i'm gonna quote oprah which I, <laughs> i'm sorry to do um but where it's like oh oh my god i'm getting it this brain disease thing and was there any moments for you like that where you can kind of pinpoint or share with us uh there were subtle moments i think that you know um you know, uh, the moments uh, that I had were, were moments, you know, uh, that I shared with, you know, my higher power where I seen, you know, old uh, behaviors or traits coming back. Um, and then, you know, just uh, just knowing I'm not alone, you know, um, it was always there was always that perfect timing when either the participants or the staff just said the right thing at the right time. It was just, it was just, you know, that to either encourage me or, or help me pick up my socks and maybe look at something that uh, I wasn't seeing. Yeah. So, you know, I think that it's been subtle, subtle things, not so much of a, you know, a, a bright light and, uh, you know, and just a smack to the forehead telling me I'm healed, but more of a, just an encouraging word or a like, you know, maybe look at this, which is helping me to grow. Yeah. And, you know, and by growing and, and reaching little goals that I'm not even setting, but that I'm accomplishing through the fellowship uh, that's mm -hmm. here, uh, it's enabling me to, to have those aha moments. Aha, I'm, you know, I, 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 I feel like, you know, I, I'm progressing in the right direction. So to, uh, graduation is today. Graduation today. So how are you feeling? I'm feeling a little nervous, you know, um, in the sense of, uh, you know, this has been a, a real a great experience for me, you know, and, uh, you know, I have the wreckage to face when I get out. But, you know, I think that by having a, you know, a clear mind and um, some uh, tools in place that I'm going to leave here with, mm -hmm. I think it will enable me to handle whatever comes my way. Uh, a little bit better and a little bit more rational. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's okay to have those tools, but you have to use them. And I think it's a combination of, of you know, um, the tools that I have from here, um, you know, the re rekindled relationship with my higher power, the, the support on the outside. And I think that the program here has really enabled me to, um, be prepared for whatever may come my way to the best of my ability. Uh, you know, we spent a lot of time this week talking about relapse and, uh, and, and the different situations that may come about. And, you know, um, it really helped me, helped me 
understand that you know um, that I'm not in a fairy tale that I'm still in my life this is still you know this is still uh, this is still my story mm -hmm. and you know my story comes with um, you know consequences that you know that I have to face through my actions prior to coming in here my story um, you know is about a, a guy that's you know only had a short period of time off uh, mind-altering substances that is just learning to crawl like a little baby but I don't think I can be any better prepared to face what I have to face than I am today you know so uh, I guess um, you know being nervous uh, I think is it's a healthy nervous mm -hmm. or not I wouldn't say nervous more of a just yeah, it's I, I, I it's a mixed most of a uh, most mixed bag of emotions. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm sad to see you know uh, to leave the people that have been such a instrumental part of me being successful in this program. Yeah. The staff, the participants, yeah. you know. Um, but and I'm I'm uh, looking forward to the you know to to the next part of my journey. So um, you know, with that comes a little bit of nervousness but you know i think it's a healthy it's a healthy you know uh it's a healthy feeling i feel so yeah, healthy fear right 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 yeah, so man. you know uh but it, it just uh, helps me to realize that i can't do it on my own you know that's yes. that's the feeling i have that i need what i have here and what's helped me get to the point where i'm at is is what i need when i'm outside here and that's you know a fellowship with people that are going through the same things that can help me, you know, along my journey. I've tried to do it on my own every which way, and it's been a train wreck every time. So, you know, um, it's definitely a we program. So, you know, uh, I'm gonna just leave here and kind of like not have any gap of, of you know, not focusing on what I need to in order to stay clean and sober. I'm going like right to a meeting uh, tomorrow in Summerland and. Uh, and looking for a home group and a sponsor and the things that I need to be successful. So great. Yeah. Okay. So how about for the individual that might be out there who's still suffering, you know, can you, can you maybe offer some words of wisdom or some advice or some encouragement to them possibly? Is there anything that comes to mind? Uh, I just, you know, if you want it, it's out there for you, you know, um, yeah, if you want it. If you want it, it's it. There is a solution, and it's it's a solution of you know, uh, it's a solution of freedom, and it's, and hope. Nice. You know, and you know, um, it's it's there. If you want it, you know, it's there. Yeah. And uh, you know, um, I know that you know. There's people out there that that have never had this opportunity. That I have, and I, I feel truly grateful for it. But there's, there's, you know, there's all kinds of help out there now. It, it's a, you know, it, it's socially um, accepted now that that this is a, this is a not a problem of bad behavior or bad morals. That this is a disease, yes. and and you know, you that the greatest thing I learned in it was that I'm not responsible for my disease, but I am responsible for my recovery. And you know that 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 takes away all the guilt and the shame of of me thinking I'm a bad person, and helps me get into the solution of what can I do in order to get better and well. And uh, and you know it's 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 not a pipe dream. It's not um, it's not a fantasy. It's real. The solution is real, and it's um, you know it's all based off. Uh, the 12 steps which gives us the freedom from our disease um, that we're not run by it and you know it, it enables us to work with what we have so and that's what this program is based on and that's why what brought me to it is I know that there's a solution I had it I lost it because I stopped doing the work and now I got it again so you know I know that this program works it's worked for me but you only get out of something once you put into it, and that's what I'm learning.